Okay, so this first session, it's uh, basically an introduction. I hope you can see my slides. So it's yeah. an introduction, yeah, to professional healthcare service and practice. Uh, we'll just go briefly through it. Um, please let me know at any point in time, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, yeah, so whenever you feel that you want more clarification on some point, just let me know. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the first learning objective that we have, it's understanding the policy context of healthcare services. So now what this, um, you'll have obviously learning objectives and based on these learning objectives, you'll have assignments that you will have to submit uh, two weeks after completion of your last session. So um, we have a session with tomorrow and then there'll be another session which will be a discussion on your assignment which will be the next week. Um, so then from there on, then onwards, you'll have two weeks time to submit your assignment. Um, so yeah, any questions again? If you don't re uh, recall questions right now, um, it sometimes happens that you re remember questions, you remember to ask questions later on. So that's perfectly okay. Um, you can always email. Um, the, uh, using the ID, I'll just share with you at the end. So our first uh, learning objective is to understand the policy context of healthcare services. Um, any idea what policies there, or what are the policies out there that we adhere to or the NHS uh, follows? Any policies that you can recall or if you're aware of? Anyone? Any policy? Mm -hmm. No one? Policy. Okay. Yeah. You want to say something? Yeah. Um, providing person centered um, care to the patient that they come there and to and treat them with respect. Yes. Yes, treating people with respect. Recording and practice. Any name for that policy? Do you have any idea of these policies are called something, isn't it? Do you have specific names for these policies? So, okay, it's fine. Uh, the NHS works around different policies. And uh, we'll talk a bit about um, what a policy or a legislation is. So let's take a look at policy, uh, the policy context for healthcare and uh, how it impacts healthcare delivery. So within the UK, uh, most of the healthcare is delivered by or on behalf of the NHS, which we know as the National Health Services. So they have their policies and they tend to dominate the healthcare provision. And policies, <clears throat> there are a wide range of policies because there are a wide range of issues and um, <clears throat> guidelines that we have to follow. So it's not one set of policy. And what's the main thing that Policies keep changing also. <clears throat> so uh, you have a policy and to run that policy, you have a proper procedure in place. So uh, obviously the policy will tell you um, about what uh, what's within the program. Uh, so for instance, if it's, a, um, if it's a hospital setup, there's a different policy for that. If it's um, a care home, there's a different policy for that. If, a, if it's a restaurant or a hotel, let's say, um, anything to do with hospitality, there's def there are different policies there. And then obviously you have different procedures that run those policies. So they're, they're more uh, elaborations of those policies and how to go about with those policies. So there's a whole range of policies legislations and guidelines. So policies change and guidelines also change accordingly. And that is for uh, guiding us in our day-to-day -day healthcare situations in the NHS. So, and <clears throat> these are a, a means of education and training for us. 
And um, if we know them, if we are aware of them, it makes our lives easier and it makes the others' lives easier also. Our clients are happier with us because they know that we have adhered to the policy. And <clears throat> whenever we are providing healthcare, it's consistently provided. It's not different for different individuals. So um, we're talking about the overarching requirements that provide the context to in which day-to-day -day healthcare is provided. So the, most of this policy, which is, is relevant to the whole of the UK, but there are some differences between England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. And we'll mainly look at England, And uh, but you should be aware of um, the other policies also. And it should be a part of your CPD, your continuing professional development, uh, in order to, um, which is a part of this course, uh, to be up to date with the knowledge, because you're a, a part of the field. Um, so what are the key organizations that make up the NHS and how can they collaborate with partners in the health and care system uh, in order to del deliver joined, uh, joined up care? So there's a short video that I would want you to see. <clears throat> Just a minute. Wait a minute, and I'll just share this video with you. Let's stop sharing here. I'll just open it directly. <clears throat> So while I'm opening this, uh, any other policy comes to your mind now that we've talked about, I've talked a bit about the policies while I'm opening this. Any idea? Any policies that you adhere to within your care homes? Oh, it's opened up. Just a minute. Let me just share this video with you. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so it says how the NHS works in the UK. Uh, is the legislation that govern mm -hmm. the and um, that and um, the practice that goes on in the NHS? Yes, there's proper registration also. Yeah, yeah that's one of the policies. Yes. So thank you. Um, so how does the NHS in England work? How is it changing? Yeah, we'll have a look at it.
Uh, teacher, I can't hear the, the sound or the volume, please. Yeah. So how did you find this video? Any idea? Stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts about this video? So teacher, we didn't hear it was no uh no sound, no volume. No volume? Oh. Yeah, yeah we did we didn't hear. I'm oh. so sorry. That's okay. So it's basically saying that um, the NHS, it has different roles. We'll be talking about this video anyways. Um, but you did see the transcript down, uh, what was mentioned down. Any idea what, what it said? Yeah, it works with um, the local council. Mm -hmm. and um and other um, partners outside 
and independent agencies as well. They all come together to um yeah. do the um provide service. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. Oh, you were saying can't hear, please. Sorry, I missed those messages. Um, that's okay. If we have time, we'll have a look at it again. So um, thank you for that. Yeah. So major policies and legislations, how do they impact health? So <clears throat> why do we need to be aware of uh, obviously these major health, health policies? Because if we are a part of the um, of um, the NHS, uh, we are delivering health. Um, so this means that we need to make sure that all the policies that we are dealing with. Um, I in check. Yeah, sorry. I in check all policy. Are, we need to make sure that all policy are in check. Yes, yes, yes. So the uh yes, and the devolution of healthcare. What do you mean by what do I mean by devolution of healthcare or devolution of healthcare? What is it meant? So it means uh, the devolving of healthcare. So that means that healthcare was not like this before. Health was under, it was more of uh, an uh, something that was centered around just one organization or one body and no one had any rights. There were no, there were uh, no, let's say, uh, with devolution, obviously, you give more people rights, you give more people um, access to rights, and they uh, can work with you, uh, as opposed to just having a centralized health system where you will not allow anyone to be a part of the working, and uh, you will be the sole body that will be organizing and managing and directing health, and there'll be no other body having a say in it. So um, the devolution of healthcare made it possible that there were different institutes, different organizations that had a say again. Um, and the ent integration of health and social care within the NHS, that made it possible for uh, the NHS to work around um, social care. So it was not just health within the primary care setting or the tertiary or the secondary care setting. It was social care also that was concerned and the principle of choice in health care. So, <clears throat> so the different uh, choices that you have in health care, you have different choices. Your, uh, your, uh, the person who you're caring for, they have different choices. So we'll talk about, a bit about all of these. Uh, this is a structure of the health and social care system in the UK. So the UK government has a UK treasury. So, and uh, within that you have different assemblies and different um, uh, parliament organizations. So there's the Department of Health and Social Care, which works for the NHS England. And then you have the Northern Ireland Assembly, which uh, has the Northern Ireland Executive, which then works for the Department of Health, Social uh, Services and Public Safety. Then you have the National Assembly for Wales, uh, which is uh, which then has the Wales government, and then that governs the Department of Health and Social Services. The last is the Sc Scottish pa Parliament, uh, which has Scottish uh, executives, which then has the Directorate of for Health and Social Care. So this is a bit about how social care services work. The NHS England, if you um, consider, they just, uh, the UK Treasury is directly connected to the Department of Health and Social Care, uh, which then directly is engaged with the NHS England. It does not have any intermediate uh, governing body. So it's directly in contact with the NHS. <clears throat> Legislations that affect the delivery of healthcare, these include health and safety at work, uh, 1974 and other health and safety legislations, Mental Health Act, 
uh, one was in, in 1983 and the other in 2007. Human Rights Act in 1998, data protection legislation and regulations 1998 and 2016, Mental Capacity Act 2005, Health and Social Care Act 2008. Uh, these have regulated activities um, and regulations 2014, regulation 20, and Equality Act, we hear a lot about Equality Act 2010, Health and Social Care Act 2012, and Care Act 2014. Uh, does it ring a bell, any of these? Um, are you, any of you, are, are you familiar with any of these acts? Yeah. Yes. No. So? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. so can you tell me about it? Um, the health and safety at work at um that covers um you as an employer or mm -hmm. employee that yes. there are certain things that your employer have to make sure is safe is is there for your safety. Like the mm -hmm. example, like the equipment, or when you are um at um uh, when you when you have a, an accident at work, all those um the health and safety at work is there to protect you, as yeah. um employer there, yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Anyone else? Anyone else? Does it? Does any of you? No, that's okay. So we'll talk a bit, a bit about what's concerning the NHS. So in England, uh, it's the Secretary of St State for Health who has the overall responsibility for public health. So the Secretary of State for Health also has um, the responsibility within the NHS and the social care in England. So you have the Department of Health and Social Care that we just saw. It's responsible for funding of health and social care in England. So the, the department provides the NHS. They have their objectives that they set up and uh, which include provide improving health care and using the budget efficiently and transparently. So obviously they have certain budgets. They have certain targets that have to be met. Those are then provided by them. So NHS England, it's dependent of, on the government and sets uh, the priorities for the NHS. And these are to improve health and care and commissions primary care services in line with the objectives that are set by the government. So the government sets up objectives and then they go to the NHS England, which have to be carried out. And <clears throat> they work with uh, clinical commission groups. So what are these? They produce a business plan in order to show that what their objectives are, how can they be met? Uh, so you can have a, a look at these plans. Uh, the, the links will be shared with you um, of these CCGs. So they, they receive a budget from the government and these are for secondary services and these include acute hospital care, rehabilitation care, emergency services, uh, the NHS 111 is included in it, community health services and mental health services. So these clinical commissioning groups, they produce business plans to show how they will meet their objectives. So they talk about health in a business perspective because you have clients in healthcare, isn't it? So, so whenever there's monitoring and regulation of the NHS, it's carried out by the Health Watch and CQC, the Care Quality Commission. Care Quality Commission. This will be coming up um, a lot uh, when we'll go through <clears throat> our, um, our lecture. And this also has responsibilities in respect to social care. So there are guidelines on health and, and care issues that are developed by the uh, NICE. Uh, so it's National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE. So guidelines from NICE, um, they're updated on a regular basis and you'll be um, having to go through them and checking them if there are any updates. 
<clears throat> you need to go and they need to go together with you like you have to be aware of all the updates that nice guidelines have health education <laughs> sorry health education england hee it's responsible for education and training of the nhs workforce so yeah then you have uh, the northern ireland so a bit about that because we are a part um, we were a part of the northern ireland um, so health and social care it was brought under one administrative system that was managed by the Department of Health, Social Services, and Public Safety. And uh, what their responsibilities are, the Health and Social Care Board uh, has an overall commissioning responsibility. Five local commissioning bodies uh, or boards are there. Uh, they're, uh, they're set up there, which are responsible for buying local services. There are other, other five health and social care trusts Please provide health and social care in the areas, plus the ambulance services, which operate nationally. Then you have the patient and client council. This is for patients and communities. Um, if they have any uh, concerns, they can share them and influence the healthcare. So it's more patient and client centered, the healthcare system there. Regulation and Quality Improvement Authority, which monitors the NHS. And uh, you have the Public Health Agency, which is responsible for improving general health of the public. So this is what the <clears throat> Department of Health, Social Services, and Public Safety have to do with Northern Ireland. Again, I'll go back. Here, Northern Ireland has the Northern Ireland Assembly. Uh, under which there is the Northern Ireland Executive, which then deals with the Department of Health, Social Care, Social Services and Public Safety. Then you have National Assembly for Wales, Welsh Government under it, and under that is the Department of Health and Social Services. So we'll talk a bit about Wales. So the Welsh Government, it's, uh, it has overall control, basically, and it has seven local health boards and these are responsible for planning, commissioning, and delivering healthcare in their geographic setup areas. There are three national trusts within the system. So you have the ambulance service, you have a specialist cancer support trust, and the public health body. There are another seven community health councils, and these are responsible for looking at general health and well-being in their areas. So that's about Wales. Now coming to Scotland very briefly. So the Scottish government, they've set national objectives and priorities, and these are delivered through 14 NHS boards. And these are responsible for planning, commissioning, delivering healthcare in their specific areas. They have spe seven special boards, which are again responsible for national services and the health improvement board, which monitors services and different outcomes. So your, one of your main objectives, when we'll talk about objectives or your learning objectives, uh, they're, to do, they're all to do with your um, assignment at the end. So one learning objective is to identify the legislation, policy, and guidelines that impact on healthcare delivery system. So there are several um, policies and legislations, obviously. So uh, we'll talk a bit about them and uh, within the United Kingdom. The most important ones are the NHS Act 1946. This act was established by the NHS itself, and it is the it's, it's publicly funded um, the healthcare system in the UK, and it sets out the principles of the NHS and it outlines how it is funded and managed. Next, you have the NHS Constitution. And it has a document which talks about the values, the principles. Uh, the rights that underpin the NHS in England. So you'll have, within the constitution, you'll have all the legal values, the principles, the rights of everything uh, within uh, the healthcare system. Uh, <clears throat> that includes your staff, your patients, and the public, whoever uh, you deal with. And then the CARE Act 2014, uh, this legislation, it's there to provide a legal framework for the protection and support of adults who are at risk of abuse or neglect. 
So this is specifically designed for them and it sets out the responsibilities of local authorities and other organizations that are responsible in identifying and responding to abuse and neglect. So a bit about them. GDPR, has anyone heard about GDPR? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the that uh, I think they protect the, the data of um, uh, the uh, I'm confusing now. Um, yeah, they're basically for data protection. So whatever data we have, <coughs> we all have our data, right? We are all uh, a part of the system. So we all have data, um, somewhere in the system. So this GDPR, it's actually, uh, it's this, uh, it sets out rules for collection. So whenever you're collecting any data, what do I mean by data when I'm saying data? It could be anything. It could be the age, it could be the gender, it could be uh, the race, religion, it could be anything related to um, anyone. So it deals with um, setting out the rules for collection, use and storage of personal data. So some data you have to discard and what, the, what time limit you have to discard it within, that has all been specified already. So this applies to all organizations who that process personal data, and these include healthcare providers. Then you have the NICE guidelines. We've talked about uh, it a bit. So they're based on prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of multiple ailments. Um, because you have such a wide range of ailments, so you have a wide range of experts working within the uh, NHS to make these nice guidelines. So these are used by healthcare professionals uh, and they're there to provide high quality care to patients. Uh, yeah, so these nice guidelines, they're actually, um, they're updated on a regular basis. And we, if we know what the updates are, this is how we remain, uh, in, uh, we re remain abreast with the changes that happen. Yeah, sorry for that. So health and, uh, yeah, we were uh, saying about, we are talking about NICE guidelines. So these guidelines, obviously, they'll be uh, regularly changing. So let's say you have your, you had COVID-19, which was not expected at all. Uh, you might have <clears throat> more changes coming up. So let's say you have a change, a very big change where, <coughs> sorry, uh, the, the older age group, uh, the older age population, they're growing tremendously. And that is having, uh, that is requiring us to change our um, guidelines, obviously, on certain conditions. Uh, and our priorities are also changing. Then you have the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. Uh, this is very important when you're working as an employee or as an employer. This is to ensure the health and safety of all the employees when it comes to the employer. And it applies to all workplaces, including the healthcare settings. You have the Mental Health Act, 1983, which provides a legal framework for the treatment and care of people who have mental health conditions. And um, some people, they have to be detained and treated in different ways. So that act also has these um, the procedures, what, what you, uh, how do you go about with patients ha who have these conditions? So, uh, your, so this was a bit about legislations and policies. Now, uh, the second uh, part of it is to describe the impact of key requirements on service. So, whenever we're talking about these, um, like um, these actions, 
you should be aware that these are a part of your learning objectives. So just pay more attention to them because you'll have to obviously work upon them uh, when you have your assignment. <clears throat> so the impact, uh, there's several impacts on the key requirements uh, and they can be significant and far reaching. So we'll talk about the funding for instance. So NHS is funded through taxation and government funding. So <clears throat> whenever there are less uh, taxes being cut, there's uh, obviously a pressure on the uh, the healthcare services. Budget cuts would lead to a longer waiting times for appointments because you'll have lesser number of people working if there are budget cuts there uh, <clears throat> within the healthcare system, which will increase your um, waiting time for appointments and procedures, reduce staff levels and fewer available resources for patients. So let just just this impact. It's it's a great impact. And just that what funding could have. Then coming about regulatory requirements, we talked about GDPR, Health uh, Safety, Health and Safety at Work Act. So this, this these legal obligations are there uh, on all healthcare providers. So if you comply with these requirements, uh, they can be time consuming and costly for the healthcare organizations. But if you fail to comply, they can result in fines or legal action. So it's a two a double edged sword. And then you have the nice guidelines. So these are evidence based recommendations. So nice guidelines, if they are changing, they're changing on the basis of evidence, which you get from experts, obviously. Uh, as I said, it's for prevention, diagnosis and treatment of medical conditions. Healthcare providers, they're expected to follow these guidelines always. And if you don't follow them, you'll have reduced funding from the regulatory bodies. Uh, Mental Health Care Act 1983. So it uh, provides a re legal framework. We've talked a bit about it. It can have a significant impact on patients, their families, and healthcare providers. Um, so this act is therefore in place and it allows for involuntary detention and treatment of patients when they are going through certain circumstances. And this can be controversial and challenging for healthcare professionals also. So they have to uh, see what's in the best interest of the patient. The CQC, Care Quality Commission, we talked a bit about it. It's an independent regulator of healthcare services in the England, and it assesses and rates the quality. So they'll have their audits regularly with you. And if they give you poor rate, rating, this could reduce your funding, have media uh, uh, give a negative coverage, and you'll lose public trust and interest. So overall, uh, the key requirements, these have significant impacts on health care services. There are other requirements as well. Um, you could think about them. Um, so, and then uh, they shape the quality and availability of care that's been provided to patients. And uh, they also shape the regulatory and financial environment in which the healthcare providers, they operate. Uh, these are some of the resources that you could um, use. And if you have any queries, any questions, please email on learnerwork at ukversity.co.uk. <clears throat> so I'll go back to this video um, because we have some time. And just let me know whenever you can hear it. Stop sharing this. Um, and then you're free to go. Um, um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Do you have any questions? Anyone have any questions? Are we no? going to get the recordings? Sorry? Are we going to get the recording? Yes, yes, definitely. You'll have the recordings. Um, just... Let me know whenever you can hear this. Can you hear this? Oh, yeah. Can you? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I still I don't know. This, this shouldn't be changed. Uh, can you hear it now? Yeah, it's coming now. Yes. 
That's great. So um, that's it from my side. If you have any questions, please email me on uh, the link that was shared with you. Uh, so once you're done with this video, um, I'll be ending the presentation. Is that okay? I'm assuming you have no questions. Mm. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's the end of it. Uh, thank you from my side. So, yeah. This is something, not playing. You seeing something? We can't hear it. You can't hear it. You still can't hear okay. it. Yeah, you can't hear it. Because. Can you hear it now? No. No? No, no. No. Uh, There's still no voice. Yes, because I'm not. Okay, so what I will do, what I can do for you now, that's the only option I have. Mm -hmm. So I'm stopping share here. Within uh, the chat box, I'll just add this video. Is that okay? I'll just give a link to this. So just have a look at this. It's very, very helpful. It might help you in your... Um, in your presentation, uh, in your um, your work that you're doing also. Um, so when you're um, submitting your work, you could have a good look at this video. And um, yeah, I'll just go to the chat, just a minute. So please let me know if you get this link. Yeah, the link is there. Yeah, I think so. I see the link on chat. Yeah, just please use this link. I'm not ending the um meetings because chat. whenever you want to use the link, I'll end it in uh, another ten minutes. Um, so that is from my side. Just have a look at this video, and then you can you're free to go. Thank you so much. I'll meet you tomorrow then, same time. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. If you have any questions, I can always take them tomorrow also. So it's it depends. Yes. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Yeah.
That's all from my side. Thank you so much for attending. Bye and take care. Bye. Yeah, the recordings will be available. Thank you. Bye.